There's nothing like grilled carne asada and pollo. Thin slices of meat that are extremely flavorful and guaranteed to please a crowd and it's one of my favorite things to make. In this video, I'm going to give you all of the trade secrets. Everything from selecting your cut of meat to seasoning and marinating your carne asada and pollo for that perfect, flavorful, authentic taste. Let's dive in. I gotta tell you guys, there's something about carne asada. Grilling some carne asada with your family and friends on a Sunday and just enjoying the afternoon always hits the spot. And I also love grilling some chicken. So over the years living in LA, living in California, I've found different ways of marinating and prepping my carne asada and my chicken for that Sunday afternoon and keeping it authentic to the Mexican tradition. So I figured I'll do a video with some secrets. And I've actually picked up these secrets from local restaurants, local butchers, family and friends, people that have done it really, really well and know how to do it all their lives. Traditions that were passed down from family to family, friends to friends, and so forth. There's actually a local butcher that we get our carne asada from, and he always marinated it really, really well. This place is really popular and it's really authentic and really known and you'll see lines out the door, everyone waiting to get meat from this butcher. One day I just asked him, I said, hey, how do you marinate your carne asada? How do you marinate your chicken? So let's dive deeper into the secrets and hopefully I can help you make the best carne asada ever. So what's carne asada? Carne asada is just beef. Traditionally, it's skirt steak or flank steak or some other form of thin steak. You typically want to get something that's a bit fatty, not too fatty, but not too lean because you want some flavor. You'll find a lot of people cutting their carne asada from chuck meat or even ribeye. It all depends on what you like. I prefer chuck meat. The secret to the meat is cutting it really, really thin. Now, butchers can do this really easily because they just slice it using one of their machines. At home, it's really hard to do with a sharp knife. It's not completely unachievable, but it's just a lot harder. So that's where a butcher comes into play unless you buy your own meat slicer. But if you cut it thin and you're consistent with that, you will always get consistent pieces. You won't get something that's too big and slightly undercooked or too small and burnt. You'll also cook your food a lot faster. You'll get much thinner slices. So when you do get fat in those pieces, they will just explode with flavor and it's just absolutely beautiful. Now the process for the chicken is slightly different. You can use chicken breast or chicken leg. I prefer chicken leg, it's darker, has a little bit more flavor and cheaper, and I feel like it's the best bang for your buck. But we love making both, carne asada and the chicken, especially for parties or when we have family and friends over, and sometimes we're just craving it. To be honest with you guys, I spend most of my time cooking it for family and friends, so I never get to enjoy it. By the time I'm ready to enjoy it, it's all gone. But otherwise, it's the perfect party dish, carne asada, and pollo. So let's talk about the seasoning a little bit more. Everything's off the shelf. You should be able to easily find it at your local grocery store or market. You'll have a much better chance at finding this stuff in a Mexican market or a Spanish market. Get the larger can of seasoning. It's like six bucks. It's a way better value. They sell the little ones for like three or four bucks and that's a total ripoff. So just get the larger one. And then for the marinade, it's another off the shelf product. You can find it for around $3, $4 or so. Really simple to do. Get your carne asada, lay it flat, marinate it with the carne asada spices, and then make sure you're really generous. And then you're going to put all the carne asada in a bag or a bowl, whatever you prefer. I have a vacuum sealer, so I usually put it all in a bag. Pour the marinade in there, seal it, put it in my refrigerator overnight. And then the next day it's ready to go. The spices, the marinade has completely penetrated through and it's loaded with flavor. For the chicken, it's the exact same way. Lay it flat, be generous with the chicken seasoning, the pollo seasoning, and then I put it in a bag, put the marinade in there as well, seal it, put it in the fridge, leave it overnight, the same thing. Loaded with flavor, ready to go. Now when you take it out the next day, before you're gonna grill it, take it out of the fridge and leave it on your counter for at least 30 minutes. You want it to come down to room temperature. Otherwise, the chicken, the meat's gonna be way too cold. And then when you go to grill it, it's not gonna be cooking very efficiently and you'll probably dry it out. Let's switch over and let's talk more about the grilling process. Okay, choose your favorite grill, but I highly recommend you cook this over a flame over a grill. You can use propane, you 
can use charcoal. Personally, I think charcoal is way more flavorful, but the propane gas is really convenient. Be careful with propane gas because the carne asada and the pollo have been marinating and they're really juicy, you tend to get a lot of flare ups. So that's another pro to charcoal. A little bit easier to control those flare ups. You can also put it on a pellet smoker if you want, but I think that's unnecessary and it's not gonna be as efficient, it's not gonna be as quick. So I think gas or charcoal is the way to go. Now, like I said earlier, take the meat out, let it get to room temperature for about 30 minutes or so before you start grilling, or you're gonna dry it out and it's not gonna be very consistent and it's not gonna get cooked evenly and thoroughly. Or you're just gonna struggle, it's just gonna be a nightmare. It's a good idea to always allow the meat to get to room temperature. Preheat your grill like always, get it nice and hot, lower the temperatures if you have a gas grill, there's no reason to go on super, super hot. I like to start off with the chicken first because the carne asada is gonna cook way faster. So I usually set up two zone cooking where I have the chicken on the indirect side and I let that cook for about 30 minutes or so, get it, you know, 90% there. I check it with a thermometer, usually around 150, 155 or so, I'll start searing it, getting some color on both sides. I'll check it again. If it hits 165, I'm good to go. If not, I'll leave it there for another five or 10 minutes. Check it until you get to that 165, 170, pull it off and then put it in a container or put it off to the side and let it rest. While it's resting, I'll start cooking the carne asada and we're gonna start searing right away, directly over flames. We wanna cook really fast. The steak's really thin and that's another pro of the carne asada. That's another secret. When you have it thin like that, Every piece is gonna be consistent, it's gonna be juicy, it's not gonna to be tough, it's gonna to be extremely flavorful because you're gonna have fat content with every bite and everything's just gonna to be to perfection. So quickly, sear it on one side, sear it on another side, depending on how you like it. I like mine pretty much medium rare or medium, but a lot of people love the carne asada slightly charred and I agree that it tastes really good. So whatever you prefer and that's it, put it in your container or whatever it is that you're gonna let it rest in, let it rest, by the time everything's ready to go, you have your chicken, you have your carne asada, make some rice, make some beans, warm up some tortillas, and you have yourself a party. That's it for me, guys. I hope you found this video informative. Check out some of my other videos, and I will catch you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Hey, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed that video. Please support the channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing with your family and friends. Follow us on social media, and check out our new merchandise store. And above all, Thank you for supporting this channel and thank you for watching.